Good evening. Hope everyone's doing well. I'm just waiting for everybody to join before I start. Good evening. I hope you're doing well. So I'm just taking in. Good evening. I hope you're doing well. Just taking in the worship music. Again, it's good to listen to um, harp music. Um, remember what happened when David was asked to go to Seoul and it calms the atmosphere. Saul had an angry demon in him and it was the harp that soothed Saul. So that was, that's the access that David used through the harp to, to soothe Saul's um, torment. So it's good for us to keep harp music playing, you know, in our atmosphere. I was listening to another I told you guys, guys it was safe. Um, I mean, nothing happened to me, but certain music, um, I would say not music, but certain instrumentals, um, it might sound beautiful, but again, depending on the hands that are playing it. Anyway, I've covered this one with the blood of Jesus and in the mighty name of Jesus, we are safe. There is nothing hidden behind it. You know, we have the whole armor of God I put on the whole armor of God on us in the mighty name of Jesus, that no harm will come to us, that we'll be able to withstand the, the fiery darts that are thrown at us in the noon, in the morning and in the night in the mighty name of Jesus, that we'll be able to withstand the noisome pestilence in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's just worship God and thank him for today. Today has been... <laughs> um, soothing but it was you know there was also a level of attack you know it's amazing i don't know it's like it's amazing how we go through our own individual battles but some battles of others pour into our lives um but what i would say for all of us is to you know just continue to pray because everyone's trial, you know, what I will be teaching about today, everyone's trial is different. What God will allow you to go through is different from what God will allow me to go through. So we have to be careful on how, when we're going through our trial, how we handle other people. Because there's something I was told that people always remember, you know, how you made them feel. People will always remember how you made them feel. You know, you can say sorry. Yes, we we're told to forgive and forget, but the feeling, and it's the feeling and the memory of it, you know, how it felt, is kind of off-putting. So we have to be careful how we treat others when we are going through our own trial, when God is testing us. You know, um, Jesus, when he was being tested, you know, and he was put through the temptations, I think they, yeah, they call it the temptations in the Bible. Um, you know, he was by himself. He secluded himself to the best of his ability. You know, so it's not when, you know, when you're going through judgment, you're going through certain things in your life. Um, it's good to seclude yourself as much as you can. <laughs> as much as you can, it's good to just seclude yourself. It's good to seclude yourself. Jesus went into the wilderness. So what is the wilderness? The wilderness is you just, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. And again, you know, if you have certain people around you, you'll start to fight and shout because you're going through your own pain and you're growing. Again, there's a reason why the, the dove, sorry, not the dove, the, the butterfly, there's a reason why the butterfly, when it's, you know, the, the, when it's um, a caterpillar, it's in a cocoon by itself. It's by itself. 
there's not space for anybody apart from you know itself so we have to be minded we have to be minded when we're being tested we have to be we have to care, still somehow care the bible says we have to be what steward as a snake and um you know and be like a dove also we have to be like a dove in handling others you know they would feel people always tend to feel worse how they handled you when you were calm right so we have to do our best we have to do our best but this teaching today will help us so, so let's just soak in the instrumental let us use this instrumental to kind of cleanse our mind and relax ourselves before I'm just putting up the volume <laughs> before you know we start i start to preach it's just taken this instrumental it's harp um you can also find it on youtube just write instrumental worship music and let your spirit discern which one is best for you let's just thank god let's cleanse today away Let's cleanse today away. Lord, your word says that we are to bind the strong man. It is written, we are to bind the strong man. Before plundering in his before plundering his house, any strong man that has followed us into our homes, any strong man that we have entered into their homes today or any environment, Lord God, help help our prayers right now to bind them up. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we call back sevenfold of everything stolen from us now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we call back sevenfold of everything stolen from us now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Excuse me. Help us all to bind up every strong man. Every strong man in the mighty name of Jesus within our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, he kissed at a day that he died, 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 he kissed at a day it did it, Addicus, and it did it, 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 Again, remember what I told you that life and death is placed in the same place. God will always give us a choice. So in cleansing this new house, I'm using your prayers and this instrumental and what God is allowing for us. So again, let us pray for me, pray for my environment. If you see anything weird, again, just continue to pray. Ida <laughs> 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is Saturday that it is a Lord, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, no weapon formed against our family shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, no weapon formed against our businesses shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, no weapon formed against our minds, our souls, our bodies, our, our, our spirit. Most importantly, in the mighty name of Jesus, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, no weapon formed against our environment, our country. In the mighty name of Jesus shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, no weapon formed against our helpers shall prosper. No weapon formed against our, our friends shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, no weapon formed against the way God, God has crafted for us to walk shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, no weapon formed against it shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I rebuke that hand gesture in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we are asking you now to let your light shine so brightly as it's written. Let your light shine so brightly within us that the darkness cannot comprehend it in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let your light shine so brightly within us that your dark, that the darkness cannot comprehend it in the mighty name of Jesus Lord we ask you to push out the darkness and we ask you to let your light shine within our homes in the mighty name of Jesus within our businesses within our families within our friends in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth our helpers within our mind in the mighty name of Jesus no weapon formed against us shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus no weapon formed against us shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus, it is said it is a day that 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 it is a In the mighty name of Jesus, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Lord, we ask... We ask for those in the mighty name of Jesus that have touched your anointed and have done your prophet's harm to face the plight of doing so in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask your anger to pour out like a cup of wine in your hand or pour it out on their heads in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. Pour out your wrath on them who are touching your anointed and who are doing your prophet's harm in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, 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 the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, 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 the blood of Jesus. We're going to pray after this um, short teaching. 
but I'm trying to, the aim of this, te this teaching is to help us understand what's going on within ourselves and in the spirit right now and how we're supposed to, to fight. So if you watch the, the, the video, the teaching I posted um, before this one, you'll learn how to, to fight. You know, you are supposed to be submissive, but again, we are to mirror Jesus. So when Jesus was in his temptation, we're going to see what he did. We're going to see what he did and how he was able to fast and stay in the wilderness and hold on to God. How he did it, it wasn't by his own power, you know. The scripture states that he was, it was the Holy Spirit. You know, he was here in the flesh. So the flesh is going to do what the flesh is going to do. Right? So he was with the Holy Spirit. So we cannot do it alone. We have to invite the Holy Spirit. This period of judgment this period of judgment we have to invite the holy spirit we cannot do it alone so this is why i keep um talking about atmosphere the holy spirit you have to make the atmosphere conducive for him to dwell in your home in your businesses your your own your own body the temple of god you have to make it conducive i've even re reduced how i watch tv you know, I'm more focused on documentaries um, and maybe one or two reality shows. Um, you know, those personally engineered. Um, on, you can find on YouTube again. So you, you have to just protect your spirit, your soul and your body. When you're going through trials, this period is trying. We're thriving, thank you Jesus. We are, Christians are, you know, God is still supplying for us. Um, the enemy are, is attacking our cup to run over. You know, I've received some confirmations, um, but the enemy is attacking our cup to run over. Why do we need our cup to run over? Our cup must run over onto other people. Right? When something pours, it pours onto something else. So, right now, Lord, all of us, our cup is full. But, so, but the scripture says it's supposed to run over. So, we're supposed to have more than enough. Right? So, God, you know, God is doing the things that He has told us He's going to do in, the, in His Word what he has promised us, but we have to be patient. We have to be patient and wait on him. Okay, I'm not going to talk too much about the enemy. If you watch my videos, you'll know, have an idea of what is going on and, um, you know, who God has publicized um, to many um, prophets who seems to be a problem in the kingdom of God, whether it be jealousy, envy, you know, the plots and the plans of the devil, but it's for God to handle. Um, but we thank God. So let me continue with the teaching. So we are reading from Luke. If you can get your Bibles or your phones or your second phone, I don't know what you're using. Um, so reading from Luke chapter 4. And we'll stop at... We're doing from one to, I think we can stop at, um, okay, let's just say chapter four and I'll tell you where we stop. So we're reading from Luke chapter four. I'll stop where my spirit leads me. But it was just, but let's focus on the, the temptation, right? So I'm going to read now. So it says, and Jesus, let me just put this down a bit. 
and Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in, in the wilderness. So this is our first, this is what we're supposed to do. This is what we're supposed to do when we're, in tr when we're dealing with trial. We're in a trial when we're being tempted. When we're being tempted, it says, And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit to the wilderness. So he was full of the Spirit. And then he was led by the Spirit. Right? And for 40 days, so he hadn't even begun his fasting. But the Spirit was, you know, he was full of the Spirit. He was led by the Spirit. This is not, oh, after he fasted, the Spirit now was on him strongly. He kept himself. There's a way he kept himself, right? For, for him to be full of the Spirit and to be led by the Spirit. For 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. So you see the importance of fasting. You see the importance of fasting when the devil is, you know, trying to, to tempt you. Temptation is not what you think it is. It's not, okay, just always, you know, I'm lost. I think that's the main thing we think about, right? Temptation, lust, a man, a woman, whatever. But it's not. Temptation could be anything like, um, you know, you're a salesperson and you're adding a bit more to the money. So something that's not really, um, something that you're trying to make, you know, a corrupt gain from. It could be, a, you know, a, 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 a way you, t you lie. I mean, a lie is a lie, but you don't always have to lie. God will give you wisdom to tell the truth. So it's, you know, befitting to the ear that's hearing it. Right? Temptation. Temptation. Come to work late. Come to work, sorry, yeah, late. You know? <laughs> Sleep a little longer because you're on someone's payroll. Um, leave work early. Not working how you're supposed to work. That's temptation. That's temptation. Um, what else? You know, speaking, you know, there's a way you can disrespect, you know, individuals, your parents most especially. Temptation. There's a way someone talks to you and how you respond. Temptation. Right? So you, sh you should see temptation as, you know, <laughs> outside of anything sexual. Right, so he used Jesus used the weapon of fasting, and he he was sound already with the Holy Spirit. And when, and when they were ended, he was hungry. Right, so after let me read that again, um, chapter two for forty days, being tempted by the devil, and he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. So, you know, the Spirit, Holy Spirit was full. It, it, it kept his spirit full. He was full he, after he became hungry. You understand how God will fill you. How God will hold you in your, in your weakness, he says. He, he makes us strong. In our weakness, He makes us strong. Right? And then I'm continuing um, in verse 3. The devil said to him, If you are the son, do you see how the devil comes after you finish fasting? We all know how, <laughs> how we get temp the temptation is even greater after you finish fasting. Even during the fasting period, you know, there's a way you would shout sometimes because you're hungry. But 
how did you keep how did you keep yourself were you full of the holy spirit was your atmosphere fine even your music when you're going going to work coming back you know or just going to run around you're listening to music if you're even in a cab ask the cab to re, you know turn off the music or up you know ask for christian music And it is these things we have to um, keep ourselves on guard, especially when we're being challenged by the devil, right? So the devil, after he now finished, when he was now hungry and weak, huh? he came and he said, the, the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command the stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. So do you see that temptation? It's annoying because some people will ask you to do things, they know you can do it. Why is the devil asking Jesus, the son of God, to perform for him it's called a performance the bible also says about the strange listen to strange voices my sheep hear my voice they know me and do not follow the voice of a stranger so why would jesus listen to the strange voice which is the devil right but let's remember what jesus says it is written so he defended himself. Another tool he used, it, it is written, the Bible. So in your trial, do not keep your mouth quiet. Do not keep your mouth closed. When you are going through temptation, fight, open your mouth and fill it and respond with it is written. And fight back with scripture. Fight back with scripture. Do not keep your mouth closed. Do not keep your mouth closed. Fill it with scripture and fight back. Right? And I'll continue. Um, I'm here in verse 5. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of, of time and said to him, to you I will give all the authority and and their glory for it is for it has been delivered to me and I and I give it to whom I please I will so again the devil um, is speaking to Jesus and is now saying He's going to give Jesus something that Jesus gave to him. Do you see how evil it works? Do you see the, the, the senselessness of evil? Let me read it again. Listen to what the devil said to Jesus. He's talking to Jesus, right? Okay. So the devil says, and the devil. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. But wait, the Bible says before when Jesus, when God was creating the earth, he said he, he hovered, the spirit of God hovered the, over the water. And it also states that Jesus was there. The word was with God and the word was, was God. What are we talking about? Right? I'll continue to read. And said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. I will. If you then will worship me. Right? I missed the line. He says, and their glory, for it has been delivered to me. So what you want to give me is not even yours. Do 
Do you see how an evil mindset set works? They're literally in delusion. They are in, they're in a delusional world of them of, of the devil. The Bible says they have a veil. So that's why we show mercy. But this devil is going to Jesus and telling him, I will give you something you have given me. And I want you to look at the devil in that manner. So it's not so scary when you are speaking the word of God, when you are fighting with scripture. This is the devil. Lord. I will give you authority because it has been delivered to me. It has been delivered to me. You know, it's like when you, you lend your friend a dress and they forget your dress or top and they say, oh, you know, if you do this favor, I have this lovely dress for you. It doesn't make sense. So this is who, this is the frame of, you know, who is challenging you. This is who they're working with when they say the, the, the father of the devil, the children of the devil. He's a father of lies. He has managed to concoct enough lies for himself that he believes that he can dash Jesus the world. Dash means give. Something that Jesus, with the word, he's speaking to the word, he's speaking Jesus. And the world was created in seven days. But somehow the devil has illusion, has created an illusion of lies that he believes in himself. That this authority is his to give to Jesus. Who gave it to you in the first place? So have this mindset and please keep this, this um, Luke chapter 4 in your mind. So what do you feel when you think about, you know, people who are working with the devil? You should feel, you know, there does get a, to a point of mercy. You know, there's a point of no, mercy has finished. But you have to, it's delusion. You are giving me something that it is, it is already mine. Who delivered it to you? See the temptation there if Jesus spoke back now. Deliver. So you want to give me my own, like there's a way, how tempting would that be for Jesus? Even me too, I'm learning. Because how tempting, think about it. How tempting is it for Jesus not to respond when the devil says, for it has, look, to you I will give all the authority and the glory and their glory. For it has been delivered to me. Ah, that's a hard one not to respond, to reply to. That was a serious temptation. Even look at the way I'm teaching. <laughs> like I'm responding on Jesus' behalf. Right? Let me continue. Okay, and then I'm continuing from um, verse 7. If you then will worship me, it will be yours. And Jesus answered him, it is written. The Bible also states, God will raise up stones, can raise up stones to worship him. Meanwhile, the devil is saying, if you worship me, I will give you all, all that has been stated. I will give you, I, I, so he's thinking in himself so big. Does it make sense? Guys, does it make sense? 
so jesus responded it, it is and jesus answered him it is written you shall worship the lord your god and him only shall you serve look how hard it is you know <laughs> they say it some pastors i think when when you watch teachings of this some ministers i should say i think some people say the three temptations or no every word is a temptation and an insult on top didn't god create you devil you ended up where you ended up but you were created for the pleasure of god you just allowed illusion to set in Do you understand what I'm saying, right? Every word in this scripture is an insult and a full temptation. But he responded, Jesus kept his posture and his his heart posture and he responded, knowing this person's delusion, delusional. Not me, let me not say person, but at times it's the people that the devil used. But knowing the devil is delusional again the bible says what well, what's that scripture um even a fool can look silent so even a, a fool can look smart when he's silent right and that's saying when you it, it, if you join a a crazy a mad person fighting on the road if you join them you will look it will look like two crazy people right so for your own safety it's good to not really it's good to hide behind the bible what kind of response if jesus didn't use the bible and he responded and fell into the temptation because we know we have done it sometimes right when you respond to something that is del- they del- they they're living in a delusion So what can how can you speak and say for this individual? And what kind of response if you respond now in a on on godly manner without I would say without the Bible what would you expect for how would you expect this individual to respond back if they're delusional? God is also saying here don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. it becomes a, a distraction it becomes a distraction don't waste your time guard your tongue do not be tempted learn how to train your tongue there are many scriptures that give us uh, the word to help hold and train our tongue right i'll continue i'm continuing from verse 8 and jesus answered him it is written you shall worship the lord your god and him only shall you serve and he took him to jerusalem and set him on the on the pedals so and the sorry just bear with me and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him if you are the son of god throw yourself down here like look at the delusion he has created for himself he now wants to pull jesus into his delusion you now look like two mad people arguing but jesus show is showing love by what Cor- is a correction when you correct with the the word of god it's kind of like watch yourself i will give you this i will give you calm scriptures I'm going to give you calm scriptures before I give you the those knockout scriptures that you will not recover from. Right? So Jesus was a dove. He knew the level of delusion. The devil is dealing with the, the delusion.
so you don't pull yourself into a a boxing match with madness and think you will get a reward for fighting with madness right okay so i'll continue and it says for it is written He will command his an- he will command his angels concerning you to guard you and on their hands they will bear you up right so this isn't Jesus just bear with me now let me read this again this is verse 9 and he took him up to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple i'm reading from Luke chapter 4 verse 9 if you for for those who have just joined the pinnacle of the temple and said to him if you are the son of god throw yourself down from here right this is the devil now now trying to to copy this is devil now trying to 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 use his style of fighting against him against jesus right so he's now speaking the word of god this is the this is the devil this is the devil saying for it for it is written this is the devil saying for it is written so don't say that god didn't warn you that anyone can say it is written be discerning be discerning i'm showing you how to fight be discerning so you are seeing here the devil's now saying for it is written he will command his angels concerning you to guard you and on their hands they will bear you up least you strike your foot against the stone that's the devil and jesus answered What God is showing you here is, please, oh, discern with discernment. Discern with discernment. The devil is also using the Bible. And the devil can also say it is written. Use discernment. It looks nice, it's packaged well. Temptation. The music is nice, it is beautiful. Temptation. When God is showing you the signs, you should stop. Temptation. Temptation. I'll continue in verse 12. It says, And Jesus answered him, it is, it is said, you shall not put the, the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended his temptation, he departed from him until an op- opportune time. So he resisted the devil here and he fled. Because he didn't say the devil now left. Yay, forevermore he left. No. He said... And when the devil had had ended, um, sorry, and when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Right? Bible says, stay on guard. Stay on guard. He's waiting for another opportune time. What was it that Jesus was about to do that the devil had to now come and challenge him and try to steal it away from him? Thank God for mercy and Jesus dying. Right? Thank God for mercy. So let's read now what Jesus, what the devil was fighting Jesus, trying to stop Jesus from entering into after he had gone through the wilderness so he's so i'm continuing now from verse 14 
And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And a report about him went out through all the surrounding cities. And he taught in their synagogues, synagogues being, fil being glorified by all. So he didn't follow the devil. This is one thing that was an illusion that the devil was trying to, to, to create for Jesus. Did he need the devil to receive this, this um, glorification? He resisted the devil and he would still receive this glorification by all. If we go back, remember the devil said to Jesus, this is in, just bear with me. Okay, so this is in chapter, sorry, verse 6. Again, I'm reading from Mark chapter 4. And I'm now at verse 6. And, and the devil said, sorry, and to him, and said to him, to you I will give all authority and their glory. This is the devil talking to Jesus. But after Jesus resisted the temptation of the devil, right? And the devil sitting there waiting for another opportune time. Jesus was still able to enter into glory, being glory, glorified by all. It's a delusion. A very dangerous and costly delusion. I'll continue to read from, um, from verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as, and as was his custom, he went to the synagogues on the Sabbath day. And he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophets uh, um, Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering the sight of and recovering of the sight to the to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the lord's favor so this is jesus also being prophetic and prophesying what he's about to do right we continue to read he prophes he's prophesying you know him entering into now his healing ministry he went through that wilderness period he went through that wilderness period. The devil was there to tempt him and to try to steal what God has called him to have. Right? And to distract him and to hinder him. Okay, I'll continue to read from verse 20. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the, um, back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him and he began to say to them today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing and all spoke well of him and marveled at at the gracious at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth and they said it is is not this joseph's son Again, the devil is tempting them. You know, the devil just planted one tear in their minds. So they had to make, you know, sometimes you trying to find an understanding of something. You're trying to understand the understanding of something. You try to normalize the thing too much. That you, you're missing what God is showing you. And you end up saying... Is this not Joseph's son? You, tr you try to make common, human, what God is doing. And we have to be careful of that. Right? 
And he said to them, um, um, Doubtless you will, you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. So yes, we're going to have trials and tribulations. And yes, it's going to start from home. It's going to start from your household. It's going to start from your household. God is just saying it's normal. Your hometown, this is his hometown. They couldn't, they were being, you know, oh my God. Oh, look at God working through this. Oh my God, they couldn't see him. But then, you know, their understanding got in the way and a tear was sown into their heads by the devil. So this was a level of temptation for them. Right? But in truth, I tell you, there, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heavens were shut up Three years and six months, and a great famine came over all. Came, com, came all the land. Let me just, if you guys are flowing with me. Came over all the land, and Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zephora. Is it Zephora, Zephaphat? In the, in the land of Sodom, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many leopards in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha. And none of them was clean, but only Naaman, the, the Syrian. So what's Jesus saying here? You know, in your own home, in your own household, they, they might find it hard to believe. They've seen you grow up. God is just showing you, expect it. It's sometimes not the ones you think that will support you that will support you. Expect it. It's harder for them. They have normalized you in every way and seen you in every kind of normal situation. Expect it. Expect it. So what Jesus is breaking down here is, out of all the widows, God was only able to send Elisha to one. Out of all of the, the leopards, none of them were, were, be, were able to be healed. Only Naaman. So don't miss what God is doing because you're trying to normalize somebody. Don't miss what God is doing. Don't miss your own blessing. Don't miss your own blessing. Isn't this that? That's the devil. Tears are being sold in your head. After glorifying him, the devil now came and dropped a tear. He's still looking for a chance. Remember, he said he's waiting for the next, the Bible said he's sitting there waiting for the next opportune time. So since he couldn't fight Jesus, he now used Jesus's, um, let's say family, because that's his hometown. Now use Jesus's family to fight him. And the move of God, he now was speaking about other prophets that the move of God wasn't able to happen because they weren't able to see past the tool that God was using. The vessel is a tool for God, but the vessel for individuals to see what God is doing. Right? I'm continuing from verse 28. When they heard these things, all, this, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath. Right? So they felt insulted. 
and they rose up and drove him out of the of of the town and brought him to the to the is it about the brow of the hill on which their town was built so they so that they could throw him down the cliff but passing through their midst he went away so this is how the devil was able to now use his family against him to the point of them wanting to kill him you know the true part he stated the truth you know god has sent many before me still your eyes have not opened widows have missed leopards have missed now you are missing to the point now they felt insulted and wanted to throw him off a cliff but god was able to help him slip away so i said but passing through their mist he went he went away so this is showing us what that you have kept yourself holy you have kept yourself in an atmosphere for the holy spirit to use you but this is what will happen again the delusion they didn't keep themselves in an atmosphere in the presence of god right so the truth that he was speaking would felt like an insult so it felt what is the heart posture what is the heart posture the the the, the truth he was speaking didn't fall on fertile ground it sounds like what rocky or um with thorns where the seeds were choked up but the the word you know the 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 the, the seed that was planted by the enemy was able to to fall on some kind of fertile ground and grow to the point of them now wanting to throw Jesus off a cliff right so this is what will happen in your family expect it expect it if the devil was not successfully in using you he will use those around you that's why the bible says be stupid like a snake and like and um behave and mindful behave like a dove right cuz again it's like did his temptations really finish it's not free temptations his temptations continued the devil still waiting for an opportune time so it was no longer the devil the devil was just it was the devil but he was hopping into individuals the devil was now hopping into individuals to continue his testing so the testing doesn't stop it doesn't stop it doesn't stop You have to be steward like a snake. Wisdom, use wisdom. It didn't stop. He just started to use those who were available for him. The heart, the heart posture that was was willing enough for the devil to be used was used against Jesus to the point of wanting to kill him. His hometown. Okay. So I'm going to continue in verse 31. And he went down to to Cape sorry Cap Capum Cap Capnum Capnum a city of Galilee and he went teaching them on the, on the Sabbath and they were aston- astonished at his teaching for his words possessed authority again This is the same authority. Let's go back. This is the same authority the devil said he was going to give him. So where are we? Let me find that scripture. Just bear with me. Just bear with me. Okay, so again is in verse 6, Luke chapter 
4 verse 6 this is what the devil said and said to Jesus to you I will give all this authority this is what the devil is saying to Jesus but God was able God was able to give Jesus this authority it's an illusion this is Jesus' inheritance this is who Jesus is he's the son of God he's God right so this is the illusion that the devil wants you to think that it is not yours he's offering some he's tries to offer you things that is already yours it's already yours he's trying to offer you stuff that is already yours didn't jesus get in the end isn't he still there doing what he does best tempting so he stayed in his place we know what you're doing you're tempting but Jesus continued and entered, possessing that individuals were able to see his authority. The Bible states, and they were astonished at his teaching for his word possessed authority. Right? I'm continuing verse from verse 33. And in the synagogues, there was a man who had the spirit of, of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice ha what have you to do with us jesus of nazareth have you come to destroy us i know who you are the holy one of god again another temptation even in the synagogue a man possessed he didn't keep himself in the presence of god he was dealing with what he was dealing with but the, the devil was able to, to get more leeway from him. Right? I'm continuing, continuing in verse 35. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. He did not give him any door again. He didn't, give him, he didn't enter into that temptation of talking and saying, Hey, shut up. I'm preaching. Right? He immediately cast, he cast out the demon. You know, he cast out, he used the authority that the devil said he was going to give him and cast out one of his agents. And when the demon had thrown him down, the man, that in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. And they were all amazed and said to one another, what is this word for with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits and they come out and reports about him went out into every place into every place in the surrounding region so do you see that the individuals now were able to see the power that Jesus had the authority and the news started spreading. So this whole imagination that the devil gave to Je was trying to offer to Jesus, I will give you the kingdoms. I will give you the kingdoms. I will give you the kingdoms and let me go back, right? Just bear with me. He said in verse nine and he took him to jerusalem and sat him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him if you are the son of god throw yourself down for here it is written i think that's not the part just bear with me i think it's still verse six okay so he said just bear with me Okay, so let me put it this way. In verse 7 of Mark chapter, chapter 4, the devil says, If you then will worship me, it will be all yours. Right? After the devil had offered him, you know, the kingdom, you know, 
authority these individuals he's continued to stay worship he stayed firm he continued to worship god you know he stayed on on his track he stayed on his um his way the way god had ordained for him he even prophesied the way so he confirmed his way with the scripture in the the synagogue and he now entered into his way right and individuals could already see they could already see all these things the devil was offering all this de- all the all these illusion the devil was offering was already jesus G- jesus is he stepped into it there was even a scripture waiting for him before i knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb i knew you so he read a scripture that about what he was about to do god already knew god already made a way for him cuz he was in flesh so they had to still be a way for him made a way made for him the devil was trying to make a fake derailment for the for for jesus but jesus continued on course and used scripture to form his way what i've been telling you guys to do is use scripture to 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 construct your way the way god has told you to go you know what you're supposed to do if you don't do reach do send me a a dm or email me but he he used a scripture a scroll a word in a scroll i think it was elijah or, or isaiah scroll he prophesied he used the the, the word himself he used the word he spoke it and made a way so if you watch the other videos you will see that i'm teaching you guys to speak using scriptures what god has called you to do on this planet use your scriptures the bible to speak and construct your way he's the word you're using jesus the word of god to construct your way he too he did it he's showing you how Right so I'm going to stop there. So we have learned what we learned in this teaching. The devil is trying to give you what you already have. Do not enter into that delusion. It is a delusion. It is clear in Luke chapter 4. If you continue to read you can finish the whole of chapter 4. But you can see he also entered into his healing ministry. he entered to into authority he resisted the devil the devil f- fled but when the devil is fleeing he's still there looking he's still there he's looking for opportunity so this temptation this three tem no it's your whole life every word of every word of that period it wasn't just the wilderness three temptations it wasn't it continued and it continued to follow him until the way god wanted to actualize for him to die on the cross right many temptations many temptations it doesn't stop It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. So keep yourself. If you know you're busy, fast. You know, do a, maybe do a Daniel fast, drink juice. Stay off food, just drink juice or something or eat vegetables. I know some people just eat vegetables, but you can you can blend your vegetables and drink them. So we know fasting is a weapon. We know the presence of God, the Holy Spirit. He is the presence of God. He's a weapon. We know scripture is a weapon. Right? We know keeping yourself in a posture your your the temple of the living God, your body. Right? That is a weapon. Right? Not closing your mouth is a weapon. 
but using scripture. But there, but there are times when you cast it out. You cast, he, he could not even use scripture in that situation. He had to cast out, how dare you enter into my father's house. He was in a synagogue preaching and you're, he, something that is unclean wants to open his mouth. You cast it out. It has no legal right to be there. So do not be drawn into illusion. Do not be hasty. It's already yours. We have seen Jesus walk into what the devil was promising him. Right? It is illusion. It is already yours. Don't let the devil challenge you and tell you something because it's not coming in the speed you want it. That is not already yours. You will be married. The Bible says, go into the world, what? And multiply. That's one of the first commands, right? We have to go into the world and multiply. We have to have dominion, multiply. You're supposed to go and multiply, have dominion. So you are going to get married. If you've been married before, learn from the mistakes and the second marriage will be better. Learn from the mistakes. There are things that are going to happen. You have to be patient. And look how sometimes how quickly it is. When the devil is there so strong, look how he knows it's coming. He knows it's coming. He knows your, you know, your deliverance, what God has promised you. Your inheritance is coming. You know, he, he quickly came to try and derail Jesus. Jesus. So who are we, right? He quickly came to derail Jesus. Then, what happened? Quickly came to derail Jesus, but Jesus resisted him. He now entered into his healing ministry. He now entered into his healing ministry. See, wilderness is a level of training. The wilderness is training, preparing you. Because before, what was, it, what was Jesus doing at synagogues? He was flipping tables, right? Was it before this? I wanted to study how he was before the wilderness period and after. Right? But there's a way he, he became, he entered into himself. The way fit him. The way fit him. You know, the coding that God had orchestrated for him, it fit, he entered into the coding. He was correct. He was no longer a glitch. <laughs> he was no longer a default. Like he was, he was able to enter into, you know, not be a virus that the devil is trying to offer individuals. You know, a shadow of nonsense. Copyright. It's a copyright of what God has ordained because he was trying to copy God. He met he met Jesus, offered him the same thing, but it was already Jesus' inheritance. So let us remember to wait on God. It is ours. Let us pray, stay in his presence. Let us fast. It's already ours. Don't enter into a delusion, a copyright mindset. Do not enter into a copyright mindset. Delusion. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. I hope this has encouraged you guys. I hope this word has encouraged you guys. It really did encourage me. It was actually a book that I was reading. I'm reading now. And it was really, really fitting for what has happened to me, what happened to me last year, why I pulled back. And it's still happening. But I'm, I'm stronger in Jesus' name. You know, 
I'm stronger. I had the right, um, I entered into the right backing. So I had counselors, I had counselors. I can't, one counselor told me, MFM pastor, don't close your mouth, respond with the word of God. He spoke, he told me that Cain, with Cain and Abel, who died? Cain died, right? So Abel died. And then in the end, his blood now wants to speak for him and scream for him. You have to speak. You have to use the word of God to fight your battles and to orchestrate, construct the way God, you saw Jesus do it. This, is, this has been fulfilled. He is about to enter into this scroll, what is said in the scroll of Isaiah. So, um, con you know, construct with the word of God and enter into it. Enter into it, enter, continue to enter into it, continue. Right? Continue to enter into it. So for those who have been blessed and want to enter into the kingdom of God and become builders, construct, become warriors, construction <laughs> workers, <laughs> you know, it is possible. It is possible. So for those who would like to enter into the kingdom of God, again, I'm having... Holding my tongue. I might have slipped up one or two times with my own temptations. But God is helping me again to train my tongue. I'm just itching, just thinking about what did he say? What did he say to Jesus? You know? He's telling me what is it's mine. You can't tell me that you're gonna give me something that is mine. But he held Jesus held himself. So God is helping me to hold myself also. And he too will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. So if you would like to enter into the kingdom of God, please repeat this verse found in 2 Kings chapter 2. So found in 2 Kings chapter 3. Just repeat after me. And the king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord. To walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments. And his testimonies and his statutes. With all his heart and all his soul. To perform the words of his covenant. That were written in this book. The Bible. And all, let's all say together. And all the people joined in the covenant. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing those who don't know you to stumble on my page and to join this um, session, this teaching today. Lord, thank, thank you for guiding their feet. There's so many things I've stumbled into, but it wasn't a stumbling. It was you that was directing me. Lord, it is your spirit that moves. You, you, when Jesus died, you came. You came after the death of Jesus and you, were, you have been in our presence, Holy Spirit. And we thank you for guiding us, for guiding us. And thank you for guiding them to this ministry and to this session today. The Lord, we ask you to, Holy Spirit, we ask you to guide them further into you. That they, they become a vessels that you can live in and use. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. So I hope everybody has been touched by this word as I have been. And if you feel you need therapy um, in biblical and... So just bear with me. If you need therapy in biblical and spiritual within those areas do feel free to reach out to me um also if you are if you want to bump heads or what did we say yeah we say bump heads um with anything to do with business ideas if you're not sure of your path anything to do with career feel free to email me or message me 
Um, I'll leave that there. It's something that also I want to pour into this ministry. So God also bless the works of my hands. Everything I do on here is something I actually uh, I'm aiming to do and already doing um, as a career path, building up a career path for it. So I'm giving it to God as well. So I'm hoping you guys will be blessed. Do feel free again to message me and I'll get back to you. So have a lovely evening. Again, my mouth, I'm doing my best. <laughs> Um, pray for my mouth, pray for my tongue. The devil does not have my mouth. The devil does not have my tongue. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. All right. Bye, guys. Have a good night. Bye.